last Space and Science Subcommittee hearing of the 117th Congress. Um, Landsat at 50 and the future of US satellite-based Earth observation. Uh, I know I have almost never mentioned on this committee, well, I try to mention it fairly frequently, but I am a former geologist, uh, and I've seen firsthand how the, the dynamic uh, uh, circumstances around our country, or our world, uh, how, how our world is, is constantly changing, and that ecosystems across the globe uh, in many ways support each other. Oceans affect forests and plains, and uh, we should understand what, what the phrase surf, turf, and what's above the earth uh, are all crucially interconnected. Uh, observations from space allow us to a better, uh, get, get to a better understanding of changes in our planet over time. The Chips and Science Act reaffirms our nation's commitment to science and to research. Uh, today we're going to examine important scientific missions carrying, uh, carried out by important partners uh, in government, in academia, the commercial sector, uh, all playing a role and all interconnected. Uh, Earth observation provides key data that serve many purposes. Uh, farmers can serve or can measure uh, soil moisture to make sure they, they can improve crop yields, weather, uh, the National Weather Service forecast to alert residents of hurricanes and tornadoes. Uh, in the case of emissions, we can, we can detect and increasingly measure uh, fugitive emissions, such as methane, from oil and gas wells. Um, in terms of Colorado, there two key issues that we've seen that where Earth observation has become increasingly important, uh, wildfire mitigation and drought management. Uh, some would go so far as to describe our droughts in the West now as so prolonged that they don't qualify to be considered droughts. They are aridification or desertification. They are more permanent than, than generally we think of with a drought. Um, we have a image here of the East Troublesome Fire over my right shoulder here. Uh, it burned over 190,000 acres, destroyed over 350 homes, uh, caused over a half a billion dollars of damage uh, in, in Colorado. And uh, instruments built by Ball Aerospace, Colorado-based company, uh, were on the Landsat 8 satellite, uh, captured images of the fire uh, the one on this far, far from my right uh, is a natural color showing a smoke plume. Uh, but the second uses infrared light to show details of where you have the active fires, bright red, the burn scars are dark red, uh, and the vegetation is green. Uh, the second image I put up here is a part of the show and tell uh, is Lake Powell, uh, the second largest reservoir in the entire country, uh, and part of the Colorado River Basin system. Uh, this ongoing drought, this ar aridification, uh, is making water management a top conservation policy. Uh, last fall's emergency release of water helped Lake Powell's hydroelectric power generation, uh, but it was really a stopgap stop measure. Uh, Lake Powell is currently filled to only 26% was full capacity, the lowest level since 1967. And you see that in frightening clarity uh, in that image. These images from Landsat showed the changing water levels between 1999 and 2021. Uh, and by any measure, these are drastic reductions in water levels over a relatively short period of time. With today's hearing, we look forward to better understanding how our federal, academic, and commercial uh, Earth observation activities can better complement each other, can be better orchestrated. How can we use this data to improve ecosystem conservation or adaptation? And what benefits uh, can emerging technologies like artificial intelligence or cloud computing provide for future Earth observation? Uh, today's witnesses uh, include, well, the, our, our array is, uh, uh, reminds me of the 1927 New York Yankees, the, you know, the 
one of the greatest batting orders in the history of baseball. Uh, today's witness panel uh, brings immense expertise. Uh, Dr. Steve Voltz, Assistant Administrator for Satellite Information Services, uh, and leads NESDIS, uh, N-E-S-D-I-S, I should spell it out, at, uh, at NOAA. Uh, Dr. Kate Calvin, uh, Chief Scientist of NASA. Uh, Mr. Daniel Jablonski, who's the CEO of Maxar Technologies, also based in Colorado. Uh, Mr. Kevin Gallagher leads the Landsat program at the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, and Dr. Walid Abdullahi is the Director of CU Boulder's Cooperative Institute for Research in Environmental Sciences, CIRIS, uh, series, and served as co-chair of the recent Earth Science uh, Decadal Survey. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Ranking Member Lummis for her opening statements. <laughs> 